I love you. Welcome back to the couch potatoes. I'm the green traveler from Gorsh. <laughs> I'm faceless Leo. <laughs> this is uh green faces on the couch um we have a different theme song that you already listened to this is a movie yeah. and tv podcast that's not how i usually say good it. save good save good save thanks <laughs> <laughs> so we're here for a stay or go it's just been a little bit yeah. feels like Trying to cram in as many 2022 films as we can before the year end. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, uh, we got two films for you here today. Uh, two that are family friendly, which that's kind of Hey. Nice. Yeah. It is nice. And, and uh, you mentioned beforehand that this may be our first, uh, our first Stay or Go sequel. That's right. Because we've talked, uh, you know, we've talked Anola Holmes Sometime last year, whenever right. it came out. Right. That's to say that it's the first time that we talked a movie that we talked its original when it came out. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because here we are with Enola Holmes, too. They made a second one because, you know, everybody <laughs> wants that third Guy Ritchie Sherlock film. Well, fuck it. <laughs> we'll never get that. Let's keep hey. going with this Millie Bobby Brown thing. <laughs> All right, all right. So, to be fair to this series, there is a series of books. So That is true. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> Who's the writer? Let's get that pulled up here. Let's give her a shout out. Based on the Noah Holmes Mysteries by Nancy Springer. There you go. This one, this one, however, is not based off of a book. I believe it's an original story. Oh. Um, well. I think so. Un yeah, here it is. Unlike its predecessor, the film does not adapt one of her novels. Instead, it takes real-life inspiration from the 1888 Match Girl Strike, which it yes, does, it did it have a little title card that. at the beginning, I remember. That's just like, hey, some of these are events are based on real events. And some of the people <laughs> were real were real people. Um, yeah. Like the uh, matchbook girl, um, uh, Sarah Chapman. She, uh, the matchbook lady played by Hannah Dodd. Uh, Indeed. yeah, she, um, we'll talk more about her later. Uh, the, I, I guess, uh, I, you know, I'll do the synopsis for this one if that's okay. Yes, thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you. I so was, not to not to spoil it up front, but a lot of the beginning of this, I, I forget the first half of this was. It was boring me, man. And then we took a break. We uh, we took uh, I took a break halfway through so that we could record another episode. And then when I went back to it, I, I will say up front, I did come back a little more warm hearted to the movie. So like, I'm not gonna just shit on this movie, is what I'm right. saying. Like, if you right. guys if you guys stick along with us here, it's not gonna be me <laughs> just shitting all over this family friendly film. Don't worry. So I, you know, I did not have that same problem as uh, that's you good. Did. But I'm going to need your help um, saying some of these people's names. Uh, I'll do my best. Okay. Anola Holmes. The, the, yeah. Um, I think I know the, <laughs> the character names better than, the, than the, the human names. But anyways, uh, we have Millie Bobby Brown reprising her role as Enola Holmes. Same with Henry Cavill as Sherlock. Uh, and I do love his Sherlock. I will say that. Yeah, I do like him as it's Sherlock. Not, this is I like this one better than the last one. And is he wasn't really in the last one too much, was he? Like he, he was, was a little he bit was like the, he was still yeah. um, integral to her solving the crime, if I recall. But and didn't they not, have Mycroft in the last one? Yes, he was also because he was technically Anola's ward, but she ran away. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the first one I kind of forget the first one. The sadly. first like, one, I remember aspects. So, quick synopsis of the first one. The first one is that they Sherlock and Minecraft found find out that Anola had been left alone at home, while their mother Eudoria, played by Helen uh, Bonham Carter. Uh, she, yes. she is off being a, uh, a rebel for suffrages. So yeah, for the suffrage that is, um, yeah. being women's rights. 
So Minecraft is like, I'm their ward and they're going to go to school and I'm not going to deal with it. I don't, <laughs> I don't remember what he sounds like. But they go. she goes to school. I don't remember school. who plays them. I don't either. But she goes to school. She escapes. Uh, and then she goes on a train and somehow b- bumps into uh, Tweaksbury? Is that his name? <laughs> Tooks- Tewksbury. Tewksbury. Uh, played, played by, by L- Louis Partridge or Lewis Partridge. It m- might always, be either. Um, so. Yeah, I'm always thrown by that one. Because then you have to look and it's like, are they French? And it's like, no, they're not French. All right, so it's most likely Lewis. Yeah. And, and it can also and be that's just Luis. a boring name. It could be Luis. But I think that's usually with an E. Um, yeah. But that's also Louise. So, fuck. Fuck it, it, man. It's a fucked up name. We love you, Fred. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So, anyhow, she meets him and uh, they escape like him getting assassinated. And then she's like, now I'm on the case. But she has no idea how society works. That's the story. (laughs) Uh, Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of remember bits and pieces. I do remember, and I think I remember enjoying the first one. Yeah, it was. But, it, was it was yeah. fun. I thought it was fun, and uh, I, I I recall it. If I recall correctly, I think in the closing statements, I liked it more than you, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, well, I feel like because we we did that with one of the with the first Sherlock film, the first Robert Downey one. That's right, and then and we did it with uh, Mr. Holmes. Ian McKellen, that's right, that's yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I think I liked it in that order, where it was Robert Downey, Ian McKellen, and Noel Holmes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But to be fair, the other those other two movies are like, you know, Mr. Holmes was just... Devastating. Heartbreaking. Yeah. <laughs> but, but beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So, uh... But I always loved Robert Downey. He's the best fucking Sherlock there's ever been. This is... I, I really did enjoy those movies. But yeah. Henry Cavill is pretty great. There is a joke about his wide shoulders at one point, which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, yeah. He was like, how would you have recognized me or something like that? And she says, your shoulders are kind of hard to miss. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyhow, Anola is trying to start up her uh, detective agency business. And everybody comes in and they're like, where's your brother? Is he free? Yada, yada. You're a child and a woman. <laughs> yeah, I don't speak to women. Um, so then <laughs> she kind of like tra- decides to give up on that. And while she's packing up, uh, Susie Chapman, the uh, found family sister of Sarah Chapman, uh, Bessie. Not Susie, my bad. Bessie Chapman, played by uh, Serana Suling Bliss. And she uh, is very cute, uh, but also yeah. uh, does a damn fine job of being, you know, a person who is worried about their sister. Sarah is missing, mm-hmm. by the way. Uh, she's worried about <laughs> her sister, and she went out and used her wages. Because at this time, all children basically worked uh, if they, uh, you know, weren't born into a rich family. And and she paid what she had to uh, Enola, but I think Enola ends up not taking the money. I don't remember, but I don't think she did. I don't think she did ended up doing so, but she does go to their house to search for clues where they uh, she meets May played by Abby Hearn. And uh, she ends up following May around uh, because it seems that she's keeping something from Bessie. And she finds out that May works at this, I think it's called like the Stag's Antler or something like that. The, this, uh, it's this performance hall kind of thing. And Sarah used to work there too. Like they, they were working at the match place and this because, you know, you got to make money, money somehow. Gotta have it. Um, anyhow, uh, where to go from there? So, she's also <laughs> being tailed by somebody who ends up being uh, Sergeant Grail, played by David yes. Thulis. 
Thulis. Okay, I Professor said it right. Lupin. Yes, I, that that was the one I was really concerned about because I actually really enjoy yeah. this actor. He's so good, <laughs> Professor yeah. Lupin, Doctor Destiny, and recently in Sandman. Oh, like yeah. fucking brilliant. That's yeah. right. I love him. Yeah, I I think he's great. Uh, way back when, uh, some uh, you know, American TV show did mm-hmm. Dinotopia. <laughs> Do you, did you see that? It was I don't like know. A no, several part, I did not like, see that. It was like ten hours altogether. Oh my god! Yeah, it was. It was back when we were kids. Dinotopia, three episode miniseries. Uh, it was like a three hour movie each, and he was like uh, one of the antagonists. <laughs> yeah, and see, I I gotta say about his performance here. I think he was the best performance out of everybody because he was the only one who I truly knew, you know, like when you when you're watching like a Sherlock film, I feel like there's a lot of people where you're like, "Ooh, I don't know if we can trust this person. Maybe it's a red right. herring, maybe it's like maybe, you know, mostly I mean, yeah, it's not even just a, a Sherlock film, it's just a mystery in general. You're usually questioning everybody on screen, are they telling you the truth? Is that are they helping the mystery? Are they a red herring? All that kind of stuff. And in this one, literally everybody be, could be easily taken for face value, and I was not distrusting anyone. And David Thewlis was the only one where I was like, "I know your rule. I know that I'm not supposed to trust yeah, you." Yeah, and at the we same know time, for damn sure. Yeah, because <clears throat> it's just like it. it that was the th- that was the problem. Is like I kept expecting more from like the Bessie Chapman from Serana Suleen Bliss and from Hannah Dodd as Sarah Chapman and all those and and Tewksbury even. I was like, I was expecting some kind of double cross or red herring or some kind of like intrigue to the mystery, but it was just me. I was just leading myself on strings because I'm just like, oh, I hope one of these guys is like doing something. And it's like, nah, like if if you pay attention to names, I will say you can figure out who the two villains are. And from there, it's just yeah. like, oh, everybody else is just face value. Yeah, kind of, um, I, I will say that it did take me a long time to to catch on to who the villain is, uh, and that it, I was not upset about the casting of this character. I wasn't either. I, no, but I, I could see some people being that way. But I also, <clears throat> um, what I was upset about was just how easily it seemed to take them down like yeah it really did seem it, it was a uh, I, I like the store from the storytelling aspect mm-hmm. because the villain has a good message that they're sending there is a there is like this this we're not your servants we're um you know kind of like kind of like i mean it, it's in the whole face value of this entire movie is like poor and the rich and everything like that right. you know it's just like there's no, there's no actual servitude. You know, people can, you know, people can and should be free. And that's kind of the message I was getting from the villains. Like intent here is like I'm doing like a, a, a like a Robin Hood kind of thing. I'm stealing from the rich and, and giving making them me. look stupid and giving to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not, not it, it, like their 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 villain isn't good. There's no good moral there. Yeah, but, but I feel like the message that's being sent. Cri- uh, rich ass people. Exactly, yeah. and they don't even My know. Only issue That's is, what's the great part is that they have, yeah, like the, somebody found some missing money. I think is what happened, and mm-hmm. took it to Sherlock Holmes. But right, um, I think it was the government actually, <clears throat> if I remember correctly. <laughs> and all I have to say is being being dyslexic, and being very unimaginative with my own character villains. Because if I'm if I'm writing a story and I'm like I want this person to be you know evil and I'll I'll just rearrange some letters of a name and make something evil out of it you know I'll take like an evil sentence uh-huh. like I am evil and just make a name out of that and uh-huh. so when people would mention their names in this and w- once you figure out who the the main villain is in regards to Sherlock Holmes discovering you know what because it's guys it's it's the second Sherlock Holmes film if we've established anything you do Moriarty in the second one. Like that's that's just always how it is. You do the big arch enemy right there. Yeah, but and, it's not you know, a so, Sherlock movie. That's another thing that kind of made I know. me mad. Is I know it's very weird. Is, yeah, they just it was a Sherlock vid- villain, and also like Sherlock was 
really integral to to solving this case. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Cuz it, it was all about Anola trying to like set out for herself. But she But didn't. then at the same time she, yeah, she has to rely on him for certain yeah, answers. She, she really does out didn't. She does out sleuth him at the end, which is nice, but like not really. But like, you know, she does get to the answers right. like in certain areas. But like my problem is again with with me being dyslexic when I knew that the villain was Moriarty, I'll say once people started telling me their names, I was like, "Oh, Okay, I know who Moriarty is. Yeah, <laughs> like, I said, all, I, all I did was, I heard one name and was just like, um, yeah, I've definitely done that with three of my villains where I'm just <laughs> like, I need to make a villain here. Do, do, rearrange some letters. There we go. <laughs> Sorry to, to, you know, tell, tell all the viewers out there that all I have to do is look for, oh, look for <laughs> similar anagrams. names like that. Yeah, anagrams. Thank you. That's the one I'm looking for. But it's just, I don't know, like, and and I I can't really knock it because it is again, it's it's more for young adult family. So like, you know, obviously the 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 mystery shouldn't be incredibly hard or convoluted. You want you want the kids and the family to enjoy it. Yeah. So like, I don't want to be too attacking on that because it's just like that would just be rude. They're not going for a big epic mystery. They're not taking like you know one of Sherlock's yeah. harder to solve mysteries or anything. So, oh, by the way. It, it, we mentioned the Matchbox Girls, but we—I don't think we really said what happened with that. So, oh, thank, at yeah, a yeah, certain right. point, uh, some company switched over to white phosphorus, which is toxic to humans. So, uh, it really, to- it's just toxic to everything, really. But these people were working with it. They—they uh, they found out, and. They didn't care. They just wanted to keep on making their matches. So, because it was cheaper. It was cheaper. Yeah, it was cheaper yeah. to process. Why waste the Why waste money on the supplies? Yeah. We'll just uh, waste money on the workers. People. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're not buying the matches anyways. And that's the sad thing is like we're being we're being like silly, but at the same time that that those decisions are that made literally every fucking yeah. day. Yeah, it's 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 honestly gotten way worse this century than not than yeah. that century but then the last yeah century, yeah we're not it's gotten yeah. gotten worse not 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 necessarily here but like all the slave labor Around factories the, and yeah. stuff yeah it, what what's worse about it is that the countries that are rich rich enough to pay their people are participating in it is what's yeah what's wrong about it Oh well, I mean, you know, slave labor is wrong, no matter which way you cut it. But yeah, it's just <laughs> this whole planet, man. Why does the Doctor and Doctor Who like humanity? We're fucked. I know. We're fucked because the, he, they like the individuals. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, with the with the magic strike, you know, you have Sarah Chapman and others, um, including who are the two that um, were help, trying to help her expose the whole white phosphorus ordeal. There's, there's two others that were involved. Um, Oh, uh, Oh, um, William Lyon, who, thank you. uh, Gabriel Tierney. That's right. He is the son of Henry Lyon, which is the company. Lyon is the company, the company that makes the matches. And he's trying to help, uh, Sarah Chapman expose, um, what's going on. And is he doing it with Hilda? I thought was it with Hilda his... was. Let me look at. A, oh, it's too new of a movie for that picture. Well, maybe of. maybe it was just two. Maybe it was just Sarah and Henry or William. I mean. Oh, I thought there was somebody else. I'm look trying to look at this person. Okay, closer. good. I'm not just crazy then. Oh, here it is. May. May. Yeah. May yes. is Ab- okay. Abby Hearn. Yeah, we talked about May earlier though, so I wasn't sure that that was who you're talking about. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sorry, I just completely forgot. But yeah, it's those three who are trying to expose, you know, this whole white phosphorus is bad. Government or companies don't give a shit about us, kind of thing. Yeah, and they're the, they like initially or near the end they want to start a strike. You know, they want to like That's be right. like, all right, girls, we don't have to do this. I have. Um, we can strike. Yeah. This is after something happened that they lost the proof. This is very much the right. end of the movie, but they they yeah. lose the proof to this. And, uh, you know, this is the, the strike part is part of history. 
Sarah Chapman right. uh, leads them. I hope it was a little more compelling in real life than what it was in this. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I it, felt I felt the ending to be quite not impelling at all when she's when she's giving her big speech for them to to strike and everything, and yeah. everybody's just quiet. Like mm, I don't know about that. Like, right. Yeah. I felt the exact same. Like, they needed some encouragement. She finished her speech, and I was like, I don't know if I would strike with you after that speech. Like, I feel like I would, I would be like what these girls are doing, which is just like, but I got a family and yeah, <laughs> two kids. Not to say that, not to say that the strike wasn't the wrong choice, because I wholly agree that they they needed to do something, right. and striking yeah. was their best choice. I'm just saying that the the speech that she gave, <laughs> that Sarah Chapman gave, in the end of this movie. Wow, it was pretty pretty yawn inducing. <laughs> like <laughs> I thought it was And I feel okay. bad because like <laughs> Millie Millie and I feel bad because Enola Holmes is like, you know, trying to be threatening with a stick against the yeah. the, the supervisor guy yeah, where she's just like, You let her whatever. speak. And I'm just like, Yeah, you're not threatening at all, Enola. Like, this is weird. <laughs> it's very awkward feeling. Like I don't know, it just I feel like they could have done more with that ending. Like maybe a better music choice, like to to back it. Like, maybe I don't know because it's not it's not Hannah Dodd's fault. She delivered, I think, a pretty decent speech. It's just the speech itself was just not, you know, not motivating. Not I can, like I can get up that. and get out. Yeah. yeah, I can see that. So, uh, just really quickly, I do want to say that Adele uh, Akhtar uh, reprises uh, reprises his role as Lestrade. And so does, and Tweaksbury is in this story as well. He helps, right. he, he does go along on the adventure with Enola and Sherlock in the end. Uh, even though he can't fight, he's literally just a politician. But he's a good politician. <laughs> that's he like, fights a bit. He, yeah. He gets a yeah, sea that's legs right. As soon as he gets a rapier, as soon as Sherlock throws him a rapier, he's like, oh, finally, I can do rich boy shit. I, I got this. I love that scene, too, where <laughs> Sherlock's just like, Tewksbury! Yeah. And then just tosses him a sword. I'm like, dude, don't do that. Don't throw a sword through the air like that. Like, and, come on. And like, Tewksbury <laughs> catches it, and now he can do his precious dance. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, I'm like, okay, if, if you're the guy fighting Tewksbury, here's the thing. I'm like I'm sorry. I know it's 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 bad manners and not gentlemanly in a fight. But when you see that somebody's about to throw him a weapon, while his entire attention is focused on catching the weapon, stab him. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally, the person he's the person he's fighting is just standing there, also just watching the sword come. Like whoa, <sighs> and I'm like, dude, this is your chance. Like, <laughs> grab him, snap his neck, stab him in the heart, like. <laughs> he's not even focused on you right now. He's looking at a sword flying ten feet through the air. Like you got at least four seconds here before he catches it. <laughs> Do something. Oh shit. So this Ridiculous. movie uh yeah, I'm not really sure what else to say about the movie because I feel like we've already given away some of the, the mystery here. Um just I, a teeny bit. I oh, there were two other characters that I think we should talk about. That is somebody who worked alongside um uh Henry Lyon, the owner, he's like a co owner, is Charles is a lord, Charles McIntyre, I think. McIntyre. <laughs> That's not right. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, it's it's Tim McMullen. And uh he's got nice big bushy eyebrows if you've ever seen Ted McMullen. Yeah. Uh yeah, they're just as bushy as ever. And anyways, <laughs> uh he has a um secretary or res- I, I I guess secretary or assistant is the best that I could come up with, but their name is Mira Troy, played by Sharon Dunkey Dunkey. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon Duncan Brewster, and she has a couple of heart to hearts with Anola that like uh, help she's in a, help along on the uh, the adventure. Yeah, she's in a Doctor Who episode, The Waters of Mars. Oh, the, uh, the episode she... where everybody's lip leaking out of the mouth, kind of. Oh, thing right, I do recognize yeah. her now from that. Yeah, she's good. She is good. Was she in Dune? Was she in what? Dune? Yeah, she was in Dune. She's one of the movie not one the of new the women. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. 
Huh. Huh? Oh, I there think I go. recognized her. Nice. Anyways, uh, yeah, I just wanted to give them a shout because uh, I I enjoyed their participation. So, yeah. it's closing statements. I think. Um, I I say. Yeah, I think that's where we're at. Yeah, I I say it's it's you know it's a competent movie, a competent sequel. I, there's things that I wish were very much different about it. Mostly, I wish that. Anola Holmes got to be more of the hero than Sherlock. Like I wish Sherlock was yeah. a B character again, as he was in the last yeah, movie. Yeah, exactly. But I did enjoy Henry Cavill's performance, so it is kind of uh, mixed feelings on that. But I will give it a face because uh, you know I enjoyed watching it, and uh, it's a fine movie, and you can check it out on Netflix. Right. I. Mm. I agree with you because it's like Sherlock's involvement was a little too much. I was actually surprised by that. I yeah. spent a lot of time following Henry Cavill, searching for his, you know, his answers to his mystery. And, you know, you just know from a storytelling standpoint that his mystery is going to connect with Enola's. So, you know, we're trying to pin, that, right. pin the I'm same dots that. they are. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm good with that part of it. But, like, Enola mm-hmm. should have still been in the forefront. But as, yeah, especially, soon as, especially, as soon as you mentioned Moriarty, that's where everybody's right. thoughts going to be, where everybody's focus going to be, and of course that's yeah, where when the he filmmaker was, took the focus too. Right. Yeah. When he had his whole, when Sherlock had his old like big map with all the pins and everything in it, and like once he started figuring out, he's like, oh, "They're letters." I was like, "God oh, damn it, it's Moriarty!" Yeah. Like it's always they always <laughs> do it like that, and like yeah, the, lo and behold, that's where they went to. And it's fine. Like I, I, I do think they they did enough to make it seem like you know Moriarty wasn't just. It, I mean, they 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 did enough to make it seem like um, Enola, you know, was was a sleuth in her own rights. So, you know, she was doing a lot of good detective work, and like you know, she got a lot of answers. She's got the the fighting skills. Like they were they they did enough to show that she's capable. But I agree with you that they, they they spent too much time making her brother capable as well and yeah. more capable. And yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, and they so, kind of go out of the way a couple of times to show that Sherlock is actually a better detective than her. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. If, if it was one thing, it'd be one thing if they would show that where his experience shows that maybe he knows people a little bit better than her or something. That'd be one thing. Right. But it was like, he did the Sherlock Holmes thing where she walked in and immediately knew where she was before yeah and, exactly because yeah, he was like the phosphorus on your fingers is this color which means you must be working at this barrier which is blah, blah, blah here yeah and i'm and like why does, did she get that moment that clue though that him knowing that and it, you know spewing out that information at her does give her a clue that she had missed right so which she yeah again it's it's another she needed him to yeah, push exactly. her that way yeah inadvertently but still yeah, yeah. It's 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 frustrating, but again, it's a young adult family film. I don't want to be too hard to it. You know, I'm I'm gonna give it two and a half stars. It, it is still fun. I the the setup of the mystery I just could care less about. Like I, I was struggling really hard through the setup, but once it got into the Moriarty territory, I was feeling a little more, I guess, in familiar waters because I know you know know that character. I know this you know these kind of these mysteries and what I'm trying to like what I'm piecing together. But I feel like it's a little too dumbed down of a mystery because I was I was taking, you know, steps way much further than what this mystery required. Like mm-hmm. I was I was looking into people a little too deeply and trying mm-hmm. to figure out if they had motives. No, you can pretty much take everybody at face value except for the, the anagram of Moriarty. Like <laughs> and, and and Grail. And it's like you can everybody else though it's just like yeah whatever they tell you is exactly what you're supposed to expect like yeah, yeah. It's, it's not it's how kind of frustrating how goes. how easy it is yeah <laughs> yeah but it's it's still fun i think i think family families can enjoy it and yeah yeah check it out i guess if you like the first one why not but you know in my opinion just give me the fucking third robert downey jr one <laughs> that's what i want <laughs> Uh, oh, Guy Ritchie. With that, we're on to talk about uh, Spazzatura, my favorite ape. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> but first, 
Should we take a soda pop break? Let's Water do pop it. break. Soda pop break. Let's Here we go. I love you. What's not? What's not open with that? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, How about we open with Pinocchio? Actually, let's open with. Uh, you know, if, if you if you like what you've been hearing. You can head on yeah. down to patreon.com slash green and faceless. That's true. And check out our tiers. We got a lot of exciting things. Merchandise within their own tier. Receivable after a few months of, of uh, that's patronage. Right. That's right. And then we got beautiful Bangers and Hash TV show. We put a, we put an episode out for you all freely this month. That's right. But uh, if you want more episode. of that, you're going to have to go to patreon.com. That's right. December's episode uh, will hopefully be right at the top of January instead of in the middle of it. Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, It's been a wet and wild one, guys. Uh, And, uh, you know, I'm going to have more of the same this this spring, but we're going to try to get... We're hopeful. We're hopeful. Now, let's let's dive on in to a movie that had me fucking... Balling at the end. Uh huh. Oh my god. And that is Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, or simply Pinocchio. <laughs> Man, Pinocchio. This movie had me freaking crying like a little, like crazy, like I was a little child. And, it, and it's because it's weird. It's it's funny because we made fun of it a couple months ago when they did the live when Disney put out their live action mm. Pinocchio, and we we're just like. I was confused because I thought Guillermo del Toro had a fil- film coming right. out. That, you know, we thought I it was thought stop it motion. Was, we I like, thought he had hands on the Disney one for some reason. Exactly. Yeah. For yeah. some reason, I, I thought the same thing. I thought I thought his film was the di- like another Disney film, mm-hmm. and so I was just I was so thrown off. No, for whatever reason, two people wanted to make a Pinocchio film this year. <laughs> Disney put out their heartless live action remake. I that am was just sure this one took so much longer to make. Oh yeah! Because oh yeah! Definitely. It's stop motion. Like they, they, yeah, they literally had to build these things and make right. all their expressions and shoot it frame by frame. Uh, so and, I, and they the puppetry, probably had the idea the first. Is, well, that's not fair. They've been making the remakes at Disney for quite some time, but right, it does take a long time but, to make stop motion. <laughs> It does, but the puppetry was <coughs> fucking beautiful. I think it was the Jim Henson Company. Um, was it brilliant? I think so. I think I remembered oh, seeing that. Great. But it's it's absolutely phenomenal. I loved all of these little puppets. The designs are incredible. Like, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly search Henson just the Jim Henson Company and Path Pathé Pathé. A, f- a couple Darn French enough. businesses. I don't know. Maybe they helped Darn. produce it or something. Darn. Darn. But anyways, it's it, whoever did it. I fucking loved the designs, not only of Pinocchio but of Geppetto, of of the death and uh, uh, the wood sprite. <laughs> I got you. Uh, they're both portrayed by Tilda Swinton. Yeah, I was about to say the wood fairy and I, or the blue fairy, and I was like, it's not the blue fairy. <laughs> it's not the, yes, it, it is the role of the blue fairy as we're familiar right. with. Yeah, it's very different. It's very different because, like, whereas Disney has their version, their 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 animation, the original animation, and whereas their life their live action was literally just the exact same fucking film and had pretty much no heart or soul in it at all. It was just like a, a soulless remake. Guillermo del Toro's takes more inspiration from the actual novel by Collodi or Carlo. Is his name Carlo Collodi? I think it's Carlo Collodi, but yeah, yeah, it, it does. But also, um, let me goes its own route. Yeah, d- w- most definitely because it's not it's not based in the early eighteen hundreds. It's based in the no. the mid. Uh, 19th excuse me 20th century so it's it's yeah, war, it world war right II before times. it's world war Two. um that's going on and yeah it's in fascist italy yes um and <laughs> there are fascists that they have to deal with um 
<laughs> Did it you recognize? Something. I don't know if you ever dove deep into the cast, but there is Benito Mussolini. And did you see who voiced Benito Mussolini? Because I think it's hilarious. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Tom fucking Kenny, SpongeBob SquarePants. Oh, oh man, he's got it's a couple other man. voices. Oh, yeah, yeah, Benito funny. Mussolini's right hand man and a sea captain. <laughs> I don't like that puppet. <laughs> no, honestly, let's dive into the the cast. But before we before we dive into the the crazy changes of the story, let's dive into the cast because the cast is packed. Yeah, it sure and some is. of them I was able to to hear. You know, there there's some like iconic voices like Ewan McGregor as Sebastian J. Cricket. Right, obvious. Once he once he started talking, I was just like, "Oh my god, Ewan McGregor!" I hadn't even written down the cast list, and I was like, "Yeah, Ewan McGregor." Yeah, I recognize Ewan uh, McGregor immediately for sure. Yeah, hey, another one. I I'll, I'll just say who I recognize when I when we get to him. But David Bradley, I did not recognize as no, Master Geppetto. I, Beautiful. I knew I, I knew Bradley. the voice, but I could not. Place yeah, exactly. The whole movie. Once I once I saw his name, it was easy. Like, because yeah. cause I, I wrote the cast down pretty early, so a lot of them were kind of spoiled for me ahead of time. But when, when I could hear, the, when I saw the name, I could easily catch the voice. David Bradley, Argus Filch. We've talked about him before oh, on the show on a lot of stuff. <laughs> He's played the doctor, you know, he played Doctor the uh, William Hartnell's first doctor, as well as William Hartnell. You yeah. know, he's absolutely beautiful, brilliant man. And his Geppetto is... It's so good. Oh my God, so good. So Heart-wrenching. Good. Heart wrench. I I loved it. It's so his like his his story is so emotionally well told. Oh, because like you know, oh, so good. Another character, another big voice. Christoph Waltz as Count Volpe. Yep, I love him. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna be saying that for every single person, honestly. But like his his Count Volpe, like I don't know why he gets keeps getting cast as Axis villains. But he makes a good Axis villain. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, he does. Uh, Count Volpe, though, is is more of an entertainer. And he, you know, he's yeah. yeah, he's fascist in the fact that he's entertaining fascists. So he doesn't want to get killed. Um, right. Yeah, he might not be complete Axis villain. But he's, yeah, yeah he's still, <laughs> he still plays a really good fascist Italian. <laughs> he sure does. <laughs> Uh yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh but man, I, it's really like in the the deep middle of this movie when the performance for Mussolini happens. But god, yeah. it's so fucking funny. <laughs> oh man. And, and, and I love I love Count Volpe when that scene's happening because he he's just like his whole life's falling apart. Yeah. He's just like, well, well, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my life. And, uh, and Mussolini. We've already didn't mentioned like Tilda Swinton. Yeah, no, he did not. <laughs> oh man! And I love him. Like I love him. Like questioning it too as it's going. I was like, I'm not sure if he's making. Like I don't remember the exact yeah, lines, but he's just like, like, is he making fun of me? Yes, like, <laughs> something like that. <clears throat> shoot the puppet! <laughs> <laughs> shoot the puppet! Burn it down! <laughs> we've already talked Tilda Swinton as the wood sprite and as death. Um... The wood sprite, you know, kind of very similar vibe to the blue fairy. You know, she's a blue lady, mm. and then uh, she's got wings. Kind of reminds me a bit of like, like, uh, like a four, if you ever seen like a four winged angel kind of look. Yeah, it's, they, it's very they are similar definitely to that. Uh, stylized after biblical descriptions of angels. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of biblical imagery and. And normally I would not be, you know, as a, as an atheist, that would sometimes bother me here. I loved it. I loved the symbolism. There's a lot of good specifically with, uh, um, not to get too, de- too derailed here, but like there's a moment in the, at the beginning where Pinocchio is ridiculed by the society where everybody's kind of hating on him and him and Geppetto, you know, Geppetto being a great, um, craftsman what's that um, uh he's carpenter. a he's a he's a yeah he is a carpenter but also more specifically i think he is a toy maker thank you. yeah toy maker but he he's supposed to be building this great you know crucifix for the town for the church yeah. and uh I, well it will when we get into the story we'll explain why he's not doing that but there's this beautiful moment with with pinocchio where he's looking up at at jesus on the cross and he's like 
why do they love this wooden figure, but they hate me? Yeah. Like, what's it's really interesting. What, why is this? And then at the end, at the very end, I don't know if you noticed, but there's this beautiful moment where, where, um, spoilers, Pinocchio sacrifices himself. And right after that happens, there's an underwater shot of the mast of a ship and it's in the form of a cross and, and the people he just saved are on that cross of the mast of the ship. And I'm just like, Oh, nice. I loved it. It was so, so smartly done. Like all the symbolism is so brilliant and on point in this movie. Um, but yeah, the wood sprite kind of looks like a four winged angel. Uh, and, and death is, uh, more sphinx. like What do you call that creature? A chimera? A chimera? Yeah. 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 Sure. Um, it's a mixture of, uh, different animals, uh, but it's still very much a, a description of a cherub from the Bible. Yeah, uh, both yeah, of yeah. these could be considered uh, cherubs for sure. By yeah, it's yeah, very it's, interesting. It's, it's, I love it. The eyes, and, man. And I fucking Swinton. love the eyes everywhere. Eyes. Oh God, yeah, Jesus. And Tilda Swinton's voice, mm -hmm. I you know, I love Tilda Swinton to the fucking moon and back. Like she's brilliant. Yeah, definitely. And like just hearing her voice as these as these angelic creatures, I'm just like, yeah, that'd be who it is. You know, like there's no other choice. Uh, <laughs> another person there was no other choice for was the Podesta. Um, this 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 I mean, he's a fascist officer, right? Like a soldier. Right. Yes. Um, <clears throat> he is. He's played uh, by Ron deeply Perlman. ingrained. He. He is a deep believer in the system of fascism, uh, and yeah. he, he he is focused on weeding out the weak in their town, and also, right. um, you know, just making sure that people are uh, obeying, because that is what fascism <laughs> is. Right. And Ron, Ron Perlman's the voice. Perlman. <laughs> oh my God, Hellboy, man! That yeah. was the, that was another one that I recognized immediately. Once he started speaking, it, like he has such an iconic voice that, like, once I heard it, I was just like, "Oh my God!" That's that one like, kind of threw me. A, maybe because Podesta is so thin. Like, compared. Well, he's also soft spoken a bit. Like, it's it's really weird yeah. how it's like a soft spoken Ron Perlman. Like, he's not he's not doing his normal. It's grit. A There's really not a lot of good grit performance in his voice. though. Because oh, like yeah, it really was. You hate the you hate Podesta, but you also understand him as a person. I mean, like you you think yeah. about it, it's like oh, that's right. Everybody was cool with fascism. Well, not everybody, but there were a lot of people <laughs> that were cool with it because yeah. it was everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it was just the culture. Uh, yeah, and it, it empowered yeah. certain people like him. Yeah. Like he felt, he felt very much in like a a, a controlling. Yeah, he did place, yeah. and he loves that. And and you know, th and it, there's also this like beautiful B story with with Podesta's kid Candlewick, voiced by Finn Wolfhard. Hilarious, love it. <laughs> um, I love Finn Wolfhard. And it, yeah. His 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 voice work was really good because I didn't recognize him. That I was that was one that it was like. Seeing the name helped me see the the voice, but like, his he, he did a great job here. When he finally gets his monologue and and, and um, stands up to his dad, uh, I could hear. Oh it yeah, then. I could hear it then a little bit. Yeah, same. <clears throat> yeah, it, it's it, and that's a beautiful monologue, and I love that B story. I love I love Candlewick because like he starts out being kind of like a a, a younger you know a tiny version of his dad. You know, he's trying yeah. to be bully. He's bullying Pinocchio. He's kind of making fun of him, and uh, but then you know as he sees Pinocchio's like warm-heartedness like just yeah. being pinocchio he, by the he way, starts uh if we haven't said ahead. pinocchio is voiced by gregory mann we had not said thank you yeah <laughs> uh, he's, he's gregory, gregory also mann. voiced carlo uh, <clears throat> yes, geppetto's carlo. son yeah mann. carlo's first son first son or geppetto's first son what yeah, yeah geppetto's first son <laughs> <I say. laughs> but yeah i love candlewick i thought that was a good story plot uh um, yeah because definitely. it's just like it's it's a good it's a good because he you know he recognizes who his father is he recognizes he doesn't want to be his father and then he has to you know use this this advice this development throughout this film to to stand up to his father and it's a beautiful moment i fucking love it um what i love more than it and what i probably love the most it's about this one. movie is is Spazatura. Yeah, we, I we do made that love joke at the before Spazatura. break. Uh, 
Yep, oh, played by God. Kate Blanchett. <laughs> <laughs> so, Spazitura is Count Volpe's uh, monkey assistant. Yes. Very mistreated, off, off, often bullied. Very much and so. When I when I was writing down the cast list, I saw I saw you know I was like oh Kate Blanchett's in that's awesome and I wrote down who she was and I was like the monkey assistant and then I was like huh and then I like I I normally wouldn't read a description but I was like wait how does how does this work and so I read a little further and saw Spazitura can only speak through the puppets he operates similar if you've it's seen the, so the live action weird yeah 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 it really is. I feel like it's probably got to be a I thing in the it. book. Like, it really has to be a an aspect in the book. Maybe. Um, there has yeah. to be a character, maybe. I, I read the original Italian, but at the same time, when I was doing that, I don't... I wasn't, like, um, understanding what I was reading. It was, like, a class assignment in my college classes. But, like, it, you know, I, I remember reading it, and I remember certain aspects of the, the Italian novel, but I didn't comprehend enough because I didn't really know the language at the time. Mm. So... I can't tell you. I can't really tell you what's in the original because I've only read it in Italian and <laughs> that's tough. Got yeah. like fifteen percent. Yeah, but yeah, when I when I read on and that and it saw that Spazzatura only spoke through the puppets, I was like, oh, okay. Kate Blanchett speaks. Then yeah. got it. Yeah. And then the first time the monkey was on screen on screen and screamed, did it's like the monkey screech. I was like, oh my god, that's <laughs> Kate Blanchett doing these sounds. <laughs> <laughs> because I could hear her in the screech. Yeah. It's really Oh my good, god, though. I was I was dying. <laughs> it was so funny. I could imagine this this like huge name actor in the studio having the time of her life yes. just doing more. It had to be screeches. really fun. It had to be really fun. Oh my god. Uh, it made it made her performance so much more fun for me because I was just the whole time I'm just like, uh, oh, I love you, Kate Blanchett. You're you're amazing. You like it's another one of those characters that you hate at first, uh, just like Candlewick. Yeah. Uh, but well, just by they, knowing Pinocchio, they're... they 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 gain a little bit of goodness back because Pinocchio is so innocent, even though he's yeah. naughty and lies. Are you know, naughty. But he, he is innocent. And but you also you also understand where Spazzatura is coming from initially too, because it's like it's kind of like he's he's. They're Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. Because it's like they think of themselves as, even though they're very mistreated, they think of themselves as Cal Volpe's favorite. Yeah. You know, it's just like, I don't know if Spazitura has a gender. I'm just assuming it's a he. Um, yeah, I have no but idea. Maybe it's a she. They um, they have one of those vests on, those circus vests, yeah. I guess is what you call yeah, them. Yeah, that's why. That's why I think male when I see it, but yeah. at the same time, I guess you know, female monkey might wear the same thing. That's true. I don't know. We we don't have to but gender yeah, them. We don't have to gender yeah. Spazzatura. But that's why that's why they start um, hating Pinocchio when Pinocchio comes in because Pinocchio is bringing in the money and and Count Volpe is just like, aha, my prized puppet. Yeah, you know, and and Spazzatura starts feeling a little bit like, what the hell. You know, I'm I'm your your fucking I'm your monkey, man. Yeah, like Jesus. But then once once Pazatura starts understanding the treatment and everything, and starts seeing everything in a different eye because of Pinocchio, yeah, it's it's a beautiful like yeah. development, a beautiful change of events. Yeah, I love and, it. Yeah, I love the character. Um, yeah, jeez, there's a lot of really sad just a, stuff too. I know, oh, right? Really just a few stuff. more few more characters here, real quick. We got Bern Gorman as the priest. Uh, I I completely, when I look up this person, I know who they are. They were in Torchwood. They're in oh, Game of yeah. Thrones. They're in The Dark Knight Rises. The puppet kind of, but I can't look like him too. <laughs> yeah, it really did. Like that was the thing is like I, when I saw his face, I was like, oh okay, I know who this guy is. But he's he's just one of those actors that sadly I haven't put name to face yet. But yeah. great job as the priest, loved it. Well, um, I think the thing John is that Turturro. not many people are named Burn, right? Yeah, yeah it's a, it's a. I like that name though. Yeah, Burn, that's cool. It Just might be short Bern. for Bernard. Maybe? Well, it's spelled like a, oh, a burn right. mark. It's spelled yeah. B U R N. So I think it, I think his name is just Burn. Yeah, which is cool. It is. Cool. I like that. He was hot. He was hot in those early those early two thousands. <laughs> Apparently, John Turturro was the Dottore. I I don't remember the Dottore character, but I love John Turturro, so that's awesome. 
Um, the big one, the last one we got to talk about is the Black Rabbits. Yeah. All four of them. <laughs> all voiced by Tim Blake Nelson. Yeah, I thought that was pretty Great. funny. Great. That was hilarious. I didn't, and that's a, that's a beautiful art. We talked about Tim Blake Nelson most recently in uh, Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet right. of Curiosities. Yeah. And the, yeah, the very first episode of the, the, the storage area. Must be unit, best friends. Where he played just an utter asshole. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's an <laughs> ass in that for sure. But usually yeah. he's playing a nice guy, I feel like. I have seen him be a criminal and other things too, but the black rabbits are kind of nice. Like they're yeah. they're just the they're just death servants, I guess. Like they, I don't know they what they are. They ferry the bodies from oh, okay. Earth, yeah, that's right, the that's souls, right. I, I guess, that. from Earth down here. Yeah. And Pinocchio wakes up, and I guess he's not supposed to. <laughs> yeah, he's immortal. He finds out he's immortal, which is hilarious. Yeah. And they're like, "What? You're supposed to be dead, kid." Uh, and then, yeah, it turns out, like you said, he's immortal, and so he comes back multiple yeah, yeah. times, and there's so there's multiple. Bits and they're just playing cards, rabbits. like I fucking yeah, love they play, yeah, they play, yeah, they play poker. It's hilarious. But yeah, Pinocchio and playing Nelson with somehow him at one does. Point. Like each of his voices that he does for the rabbits, you can hear Tim Blake Nelson in, but at the same time, they all do seem like their own little personality. They like they all sound yeah. uniquely different, and it's like I'm just like way to go, man, like. The voice acting, I, the, the reason I want to start out with the voice acting, one, a lot of fucking names. Mm -hmm. Because, obviously, Guillermo del Toro just won a Best Picture not too long ago. Everybody wants to work for him. Like, not many yeah. people are going to turn him down. Plus, he's a, he seems like a genuinely good fucking dude. He like, does. You feel, it seems like it would, you would love working with him. But the other reason is the casting, the voice acting was phenomenal. Everything about this movie is phenomenal. But I just wanted to bring all the attention to that those those people there and take this like hour or whatever I've just spent talking about the cast <laughs> because it's it's fucking good. They all did a, such a good job because like uh, if you remember, um, what was it? it was Strange World I talked about in yeah. Bangers and Hash. If you've watched our Bangers and Hash episode that we put out for everybody, um, in Strange World in that in that review of mine. A lot of the voice acting felt very studio, like you could hear the studio. Uh. You know, like you, you can hear them in the studio delivering their lines. It didn't feel very emotional. It didn't feel like they were in the situation, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Completely different here. It feel it like even though it's stop motion, even though you're looking at puppets on sc on screen, it, those voices really felt like it was coming from them. You really yeah. felt like they yeah. were in those situations. One hundred percent. So yeah, the amazing. directing you got to hand it. To the directing, you're 100. percent Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it's not just Guillermo del Toro either. It's it's right. Guillermo del Toro and Mark Gustafsson, uh, in his debut. This was his okay. first um, directorial film, so that's pretty cool. I I wonder if one of them focused more on the claymation and one of them focused on the voice acting. Yeah, I'm I'm wondering which one was which. I didn't yeah. I didn't uh, look into it, but yeah, I figure that has to be the. Has to be the thing. By right? the you way, know, takes. You've only really talked about the voice cast for like twenty minutes. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, I was worried that I was going way too long on voices. <laughs> <laughs> but another big one, the the last technical thing before we dive into what little synopsis we haven't already talked about. Um, I mean, Guillermo del Toro wrote this, but he also wrote it with Patrick McHale. We talked Patrick McHale last year with Over the Garden Wall. That's right. Um. Which oh, man, you introduced me that. to that. It does Beautiful. have that feel to it. It really does. Yeah, and I think that was. I think that's part of it is because, like, again, everything works for me. But like, what works about the writing is that it is so emotional and yet dark. Yeah, like they don't hold back on on some of the darker, more. Um, I mean, just like just Pinocchio dying. Geppetto's straight up a drunk after his kid dies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So sad. And like, I mean, cause that's the story is like at the very beginning, we watched Geppetto and his son, Carlo. Life's happy. Everybody loves them. They're a beautiful yeah. family. Oh, he's so happy. Yeah. And then, yeah. Sadly, while, uh, you know, after Geppetto spends a day working on the crucifix for the church that we talked about earlier, you know, they're leaving. Geppetto get, they, they both leave, mm -hmm. but then, Carlo remembers he forgot something inside, a, p a pine cone, a perfect pine cone that he found for his yeah. father. And he runs in to, to pick the pine cone, uh, to, you know, to pick it back up because he had dropped it, and the church gets bombed. 
Yeah. And, and and another sad fact that they they do take the moment to mention that makes it even ha- more harsh because it was the reality of war was that the bomb wasn't even supposed to be dropped on that town. The plane just needed to lighten the load a little bit and was so just like, well, we'll just drop bomb. the bombs in this. Yeah. Yeah. Just to drop bombs in this random fucking village. It's just, and that shit, it's that happened up. all the time. And it still happens today. You know, it's like those kind of. Yeah. Civilian um, attacks. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just awful, but, and, and that's, as you mentioned, Geppetto becomes a drunk, um, and then one day as he is, as he is drunk, as he is out by his, uh, son's grave, he chops down the tree there and says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a new boy, you know, I'm bringing my son back out of this tree. And so he makes Pinocchio out of this tree, lo and behold, Sebastian J. Cricket was using that tree as his home. And so now, as and so now his home is yeah, a wood boy. He was going to retire and write <laughs> yeah. his memoirs. He he wanted to. I loved it. <laughs> like who is he? <laughs> I found this beautiful pine to write my memoirs. <laughs> it's, oh yeah, it's so I was good. so like it was so funny. Who is he? Had a photo of an author on his wall, and I don't know if they mentioned it. Oh, but like I was just like, who is yeah, this guy? I like it's just a would. random. I was hoping they would. I'm gonna search it while you while you talk some more. Yeah, it's it's so funny, but um, you know, Pino- uh, but Geppetto, after he finishes making Pinocchio, the Blue Fairy visits. Very very similar to the story we know. You know, the Blue Par- Fairy is like, "I'll give this boy life," um, and then Geppetto is like, "Hey," or Geppetto, I'm sorry, not Geppetto. Sebastian J. Cricket is like, "Hey, you can't give my home life. I live here. This is my home." You know, it's just like, what are you doing? And she's just like, how about this? How about if you stay on as this little wooden boy's conscience, I will grant you a wish. That's and right. Sebastian J. Cricket is like, okay, I'll take you up on that. And he's like, I can use this wish to become famous. I can get my, you know, my memoir my star, read by millions. Yeah. yeah. And so that's, that's his idea. It's like, all I got to do is be the subcon or this conscience, this little wooden public. It can't be that fucking hard. Well, it turns out, as we've mentioned, Geppetto is very much uh, a, a what'd you call him earlier? A trickster? Not a trickster, but a, a naughty boy or something. <laughs> oh, Pinocchio? Pinocchio, yes. Yeah, Pinocchio. Pinocchio is naughty uh, and, yeah, a little devious. I didn't. I don't think I devious. said that, but he is. Um, but yeah. he does, like, he doesn't really quite under- grasp that he's doing something wrong. Because when he yeah, was got, born he again, no- he, oh, I guess... I guess that's a little bit of a spoiler, maybe. It is Carlo's soul that has been reborn. Yeah, yeah, it's reborrowed. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, borrowed. That's right. Yeah, they did say borrowed. That was interesting. Yeah, when he comes he back, he is completely oh. reborn, though. He is not Carlo anymore. Yeah. He he's no, yeah, he's completely. But he has no identity. idea what the world is. But he has the right. the mind of a, like a twelve year old or yeah maybe younger. <laughs> <laughs> did you find the author? Then? Yes, I did. The... It was a tiny portrait of Arthur Schopenhauer. Schopenhauer. Schope- okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't know if I know who that is, but nice. I recognize <laughs> the name. I'm gonna. Okay. I'm gonna do a quick, quick, quick search of him to say what he wrote. Is that with an S C H? Yep. That looks like the guy. Do you remember um, Mouse Hunt with Nathan Lane? Yeah, it it looks look like the, like it looks it. like their dad. They put on the wall. <laughs> That's funny. He is a philosopher. He wrote a novel called On Women. I wonder how that was. Yeesh. <laughs> he's he's best known for a work called The World as Will and Representation. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe I'll have to look into him if this movie felt the need to, to you know, Easter egg him like that. Because, yeah, yeah, you know, it was I, I, I fucking love this movie. So. Uh, maybe Guillermo li- likes his philosophy or something. Maybe. Or maybe he just thought it was a perfect, uh, perfect fit for Sebastian J. Cricket. That could be it, too. But the problem is, Pinocchio... Uh, and and needing to be a boy, and and you know, and Geppetto wanting this this real boy kind of a thing, 
Um, you know, Geppetto, obviously he's first frightened when, when he meets Pinocchio and it is a very frightening scene because Pinocchio is walking on his yeah. hands. He's, you know, he's kind of, it's kind of like a horror movie very kind of spidery. creature coming towards yeah. Geppetto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. It's so terrifying. Like, but eventually, you know, once Geppetto warms to this, this child and the child's innocence, you know, he's like, okay, I got to try to make this person like a real boy because, uh, I, I can't remember what his exact reason. I think maybe just to feel normal again. But he takes the boy to church. Awful scene. Everybody's like freaked out yeah. by this weird thing. And the Podesta is very intrigued by this thing. I because don't think he's he takes like, the boy to church. Not at first. To to I think Pinocchio follows when he's told to stay. Oh, does he? Yeah, I think maybe that's right. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Geppetto's in the in the crowd. That's yeah, right. I, yeah. I think honestly, Geppetto woke up drunk still. And he hears the church mm-hmm. bells, and he's like, I gotta go to church, you stay here! <laughs> <laughs> you crazy thing. Pinocchio does not listen well. No, Pinocchio does not listen. Even if even if Sebastian J. Cricket is telling him to obey his papa. Yeah. He's like, you can't, no, I will not, I will go to the church. I will oh. go to church. And it's a bad scene. As as we've mentioned, Pinocchio gets gets humiliated. Um, well, not really, but like people, mm. people make fun of him and yeah. they're like, they, they're like really disturbed and thrown off by him and he's confused about it. You know, he, he has that emotional moment with Geppetto where he's just like, why do they like, you know, this wooden cross, uh, Jesus, but they don't like, they me, don't like you know? me. And it's, it's sad. It's, it's sad. But the, yeah. the problem is along comes the Podesta who wants Pinocchio to be enlisted into the Italian army. If he's a real boy, yeah, he should be fighting for his country. And uh, Pinocchio finds a workaround. Yeah, and, and that's the problem is when he before he goes to school, he meets Count Volpe, or or does he get to school first? Is there a school scene? Uh, I don't think so. Right, Count Volpe is at the school because that's he right, sees yeah. him, hears he's going to the school, and and runs to meet him there. That's right. Yep, yeah. and he 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 talks him out of it, and. Uh, you know, he talks, he talks more specifically, he talks Pinocchio into coming and joining his, his, uh, whatever you call it, his, his aristocrat, his show, you know, whatever that's called. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, it's a carnival. It's part carnival. of a carnival, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Because and, he, uh, he says he went, line, because I'm pretty sure that Sebastian is like, he went to the carnival. And yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. And, 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 you know, he, he does a good performance there. Pinocchio does. And Count Volpe is very like, this is my, you know, my new act, my new star. Obviously, along comes Geppetto and he's like, no, this is my fucking kid. Yeah. Like, you don't just get to take my kid from me. They have a tug of war match. Pinocchio's tossed into the street where he gets hit by a car. Yep. And it was at this moment in the movie where I was like, what? The <laughs> yeah, fuck? right? <laughs> yeah, the, the first time he dies, you're definitely like, well, what? <laughs> so sorry if we spoiled going. that a little bit, but it was something we uh, needed to talk about for sure. But yeah, that's, that's, that's where Pinocchio goes, meets death, finds out he's, uh, he is immortal and that every single time that he dies, he will come back to visit death and he'll have to spend more and more time there. With each new death until mm. he's basically there for all of eternity. Mm. And, you know, he's just like, he's just like, that's fine. You know, he's like, I got questions. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, before you can ask those questions, he's sent back. And uh, long story short, he decides I'm going to join uh, Count Volpe's uh, carnival act so that I don't have to go fight in a war. And at the right. same time, he thinks I can earn some money. For Geppetto, right? You know, he's like, I can, I can, I can help Geppetto with his finances. So he he flees from Geppetto. He runs away, and he also has an argument with Geppetto beforehand. Yeah. Like Geppetto says some pretty hurtful things because Geppetto's still struggling with loss, you know, with with the loss right. of his son, and now with this what he what he is still sees just as a wooden boy, and like you know, it's just like it's a weird weird moment for him it's a you know he's you feel all of his emotion you feel all of his heartache it's just so you, you understand opposite of every geppetto that has yeah ever been and i fucking love it i love it too man and it's like you you really understand why the words come out of his mouth yeah like 
I don't remember the exact words, but it's he like calls it's him not a something burden. he would say. A burden was a, burden. a big Oh my part god, of it. that's right. Because uh, I think they were also going, you know, with the Jesus thing too. Yeah. 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 It's it's uh, it's really it's really heart wrenching that whole moment. Yeah. And like you're immediately just like, oh my god, why would you say that to a child? And before you so realize at the same time, Sebastian said yeah. that to Japan. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and it's just it's it's so sad, but but from there that's when you have the divide. You know, Pinocchio goes off with Count Volpe, and Geppetto goes to try to find Pinocchio because Pinocchio ran away to to join a carnival. So Geppetto is like trying to follow this carnival around to to save his son. You know, to to yeah. to be with Pinocchio again, and it's it's a beautiful. I don't want to spoil it all. It's a beautiful journey they both take. Um, there is the dogfish. It's not the big whale as in the original animation. It's called the dogfish here. Uh, but it's a terrifying whale thing. <laughs> oh my God. It, it's a big whale thing. Yeah, but it's it's terrifying. It's, like a weird man. it's, it's nose yeah. I liked it. I liked the design. <laughs> I thought it was really cool. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I guess like to 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 wrap it up like. I say go see this movie. This is one of my favorite movies I've ever seen this year. It's one of my favorite movies in the past, like, five years probably. Like, it's it's very beautiful. I, I'm i a sucker for stop motion just because yeah. it just contemplating so much. the amount of work. It's so, so much. Like, it's crazy. And, like, just seeing everything that went into this movie, like, seeing all this, this detail and everything, it's like there's so much beauty – and the fact that it had to take years, you know, yeah. it had to take a long time to do this. I don't know how long, probably like at least three or four years. Um, it's incredible. Like, and I love the story. I love the symbolism. I love the voice acting. It's a four star movie. Go watch it because where, where the live action remake, as I've already mentioned, was heartless, was soulless, was emotionless. It was just a bland cut and paste remake with Tom Hanks, who I love Tom Hanks, but like, he can't carry a film that's got nothing in it. This has so much heart and yeah. soul and everything that I yeah. just mentioned. It's It's got it all because it's all original. Like, not all original, but like, you know, it takes this beautiful idea and embellishes it with so much more. Yeah. This is what you need to be doing if you're going to do a remake is this. Right. Yeah. Something new, something different with the story and... uh you know, he touches on a lot of things that are probably really prevalent still in um, that. Well, that the Italian culture is still recovering from, you know. Yeah. So it's uh, it's really, really interesting. You guys should see it. I give it a face and a half because it's just it's just masterfully done. And Thank I you. really enjoyed it. It's. It's really heartfelt. I kind of want to watch it again, but I also think I gotta give it some time. <laughs> Cause... Yeah, it's. I was crying at the end, man. It yeah. was. It was so moving. Yeah, it's very good. There's so many things that happen in rapid succession in that third act, like so many choices that are made, and all of their their effects. Um, like not only just choices from Pinocchio, choices from Geppetto, from Sebastian J. Cricket. Like, all of these characters, like, there's just, like, a quick moment where they where they have to make a decision, and it's beautiful. They all they all pull through just as you would hope they would, and, ugh, I was, I was wailing, wailing at yeah. the end of this movie, man. Yeah. It was, uh, it was sad, but beautiful and also uplifting. Uh, it's got it all, really. Um, yeah, you know, it, it, I said it was family friendly before, but there are some really dark concepts there are. going on. Um, but you know, it, it, I think for your your preteens, a little bit younger than that, they'll they, they're able to handle it. They'll find this story yeah. very interesting, uh, very in depth look at this little story about a a puppet who wants to be a real boy. It's great. Yeah. It's beautiful, man. It really is. So, I think Guillermo del Toro has yet another contender for best picture. Well, they'll they'll just dump it off as best animated film, but uh, well, it will win. It'll probably that. get best. I can't think of another yeah, animated film that I would 
top it with. Yeah. Not so, not nothing that is beautiful. At least I can't I can't think of anybody that's gone. Not the house. Do you remember our first our first oh, episode yeah. of this year? The house was that this year. I that think seems it was. Like it was so long ago. Yeah. Oh, I still remember that vividly. So that was a fun one. I don't think I liked it much when we no. when we reviewed it. But it was interesting. I like the first part the best. I think. We're not yeah. talking about that. Who won? <laughs> who, who oh, won it's this? obvious. Yeah, I'm sorry, Enola Holmes too. Like, it's 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 fine for what it is. I do I do right. think it's a it's an all right film. But this is Pinoc- Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Yeah, is above and beyond masterful. Like it's you it's couldn't good. contend. It, it wasn't your no. fault, Enola Holmes. No, yeah. If it had been going up against, you know, say Day Shift or something, I haven't watched Day Shift. I don't know. Spoilers for next week. I'm sorry, I have seen it, and no. (laughs) Day Shift would still win? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. I feel like that's more of an on the level, though, with with Anoa Holmes, where it's like, you know. Maybe. Yeah, it could have. It had no chance against. It had no chance against Pinocchio. Went a couple rounds, you know. To put it in. To put it in in sports terms, it would be like you know, uh, like Pinocchio is a one seed, and, uh-huh. and Noel Holmes too is a sixteen seed. Ooh. You know, against a fourteen seed or a twelve seed, like like Day Shift, Noel Holmes might have a chance. That's right. But sadly, she had to pit with 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 uh, Pinocchio. I see. That was a really yeah. big wide gap that you put there. You might have put that movie down just a little bit. I think you well, heard no, Enola's feelings. I was I was going for the NCAA uh, March <laughs> yeah, Madness style because that's the only it. that's the only bracket I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that's our show. It is. Thanks for joining, guys and gals and and folks and everybody. We love you all so <laughs> much. Black I rabbits. Am. <laughs> I am the Green Traveler from Gorsh. And I am the Faceless Leon. Safe travels and a good night. Green and Faceless on the Couch is a proud production of Fiction Works 19. Are you a fan of the show? Feel free to contact us at greenandfacelessfans at gmail.com or visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash greenandfaceless. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Or rate us on Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much for listening.